Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. A few months ago I've introduced you to Ferrum Audio, a very different thinking team that really loves discrete components, smart power supplies while putting emotions back into black metallic bricks. Their Ore and Hypsos fully drove a pair of Hive Monsters Vara, but before publishing my Ore review, I already knew that they are working on their next project, which later was revealed as their Earth so all-in-one. So we are looking at a highly sophisticated DAC, powerful headphone amplifier and active preamplifier all put in this beautiful black box. It goes by 400 euros more expensive than their Ore, and I think that it's time to check it out. Obviously, it looks very much the same with the rest of the Ferrum family. You can easily mistake it for the Ore, which has similar design cues, just a slight rearrangement of its front panel, and of course, a much busier back panel. Everything else feels exactly the same, and that's a good thing, as I always liked that sleek look of the Ore and Hypsos. I still enjoy its understated color scheme, and its industrial look isn't attractive a lot of eyes, but when Hypsos goes underneath it, they will surely attract some. The same tall rubber feet are located underneath it, that will absorb all sorts of shocks and tiny vibrations, and with a net weight of 1.8 kilos, I find it lightweight and easy to relocate around my desk. As for controls, we are getting a big volume knob uh, that offers a high resistance, which I really like. You have your gain and input selectors, and a pair of 4.4mm balanced and quarter inch headphone jack. I'm a little sad that they dropped that 4 pin XLR jack found on their OR, but that's okay because 4.4 is already very common uh, among headphone enthusiasts. On his back, from left to right, there's a pair of XLR and RCA analog outputs to be used as a DAC or as a DAC and preamp combo. A pair of RCA analog inputs are following, meaning that Airtso can be used as a dedicated preamplifier. Three digital inputs are next as optical, coaxial and USB Type-C that will unlock its internal DAC section. You can find a bypass rotary switch that will disable its volume pot, making it work as a fixed voltage DAC. Below it, there's another pot that will control the brightness of the Ferrum logo, and you can turn it off completely if you will. Lastly, there's a Ferrum power link that connects directly to the Hypsos, and an additional DC input that lets you connect its default Minwell switching mode power supply. As for tech inside it, starting with its DAC section, they went with a single ES9028 Pro DAC chip, of ESS technologies. This DAC chip can work in mono, stereo or 8 channel mode in either current or voltage mode operation. It gives better results and a higher performance if that current mode is being used, but for that you need to build a custom current to voltage conversion stage. And of course, uh, Ferrum guys went with that configuration. So I'm spotting such a conversion made from a combination of discrete components and op-amps. The second most important thing in a DAC is timing, and that's why a clock generator is almost glued together to that DAC chip for the shortest possible signal path, and several high-precision crystal clocks are located nearby. Its headphone amplifier section is a fully balanced one, and again I see a combination of discrete components and a current feedback op-amp per channel. It outputs 6.1 watts in 50 ohms and 1.2 watts in 300 ohms on its balanced jack and about four times less power via its single-ended jack. Its preamplifier section is not the usual digital attenuator that most DACs are using. And again, I'm seeing a hybrid stage consisting of several op-amps and discrete components. Lastly, about a third of its PCB is occupied by a power supply and filtering stage that looks similar to that of the ore, which, mind you, never increased the noise floor with sensitive IMs. Alright folks, my ears are ready for some tunes, so let's hit some eardrums. Sound-wise, after trying more than 40 ESS Sabre converters, 
a very small, very tiny squad was trying to change my preconceptions about such silicon, trying to you know, rewrite that bad reputation that ESS Sabre uh, were gathered across the years. So instead of being ultra linear to a point of being clinical sounding or over sharp sounding, I believe that uh, Erzo felt like a light ray in the darkness. It was uh, getting those harmonics right. It was uh, tingling my ears with a fuller bodied sound, with a warmer, uh, creamier type of sound that completely discarded uh, listening fatigue and sharpness. I believe that with Erzo, uh, Firm Audio was basically trading uh, sharpness with liquidity, that linearity with a fun and engaging type of sound, and of course a flat frequency response with a warmer, with a creamier type of sound that was adding a little more color, a little bit more saturation in the mix. If you already checked my OR and HIPSOS review, then it goes without saying that Erzo sounds pretty much the same, so it has the same traits, it has a very similar sound signature. You are getting just a little bit less power on top, but a really nice dark section in return. So Erzo was trying me always to show the beautiful side of my music collection. And if you'll be using its 4.4 millimeter jack, then you'll be never running out of steam with your headphones. So no, this is not your usual DAC and headphone amplifier section that uses only op amps because a lot of discrete components are still laying inside that left a really big positive mark on its sound performance. Let's talk a little about the Hipsos and what it brought to the table. So with or without the Hipsos in place, I felt that the noise floor wasn't going up or down. I didn't feel that the background was grayer or blacker with or without the Hipsos, so meaning that Erzo already has a really good uh, power supply implementation, which is, of course, an amazing news. However, with the Hipsos in place, I felt that it was binding the notes much, much nicer uh, with the Hipsos. So everything was just simply flowing. Uh, there was a lot more flow. Everything was going much easier, more natural in a way. So everything that was stiff and really hard was transformed into water. So all that was simply flowing really nicely. And I was not getting that micro stuttering that was happening with the Erzo alone. So if you ever tried a really nice reel-to-reel -reel tape player, then I believe uh, Hipsus was doing all that magic on its own. So that was uh, quite interesting. Another change, but it was a little smaller one, uh, I believe uh, can be summarized by a single word, and that was dynamics. So with my headphones, especially harder, uh, heavier loads, like Odyssey LCD4, for example, LCD5, I felt that the bass was going deeper. I felt that everything was more impactful. I felt that my music was more alive. I felt that the difference between the lowest intensity note and the highest intensity note was actually bigger. So everything was simply more saturated, more alive, more impactful. Everything was uh, nicer actually. The difference with or without the hipsters in place is actually bigger compared to the or. Mostly because there's also a DAC section inside that is more sensitive to a stable power intake. Checking out its noise floor, I went directly on its 4.4 jack, high gain, close to max power, with music on pause of course because I wanted to preserve my hearing. And there was that gentle noise playing in the background with the most uh, IMs that I have in my possession, but it was slightly lower to say a Barson made amplifier. On low gain, all that noise went much lower. I could finally enjoy all those IMs, but it wasn't exactly noiseless uh, because when I was attaching and detaching those IMs, I could still hear uh, just faintly a little bit of noise playing uh, below my tracks. When the music started playing, I couldn't detect that noise anymore, and I do believe that Erzo was working just fine with a lot of IMs. With regular IMs, with over-ear headphones, with uh, desktop headphones of all sorts, uh, I didn't feel that White Wolf was howling in the background, so it was simply a dead silent unit. Uh, when I moved it into my stereo setup, I didn't feel that KF Reference 3 was pushing a higher noise floor, uh, even when I was standing still in their vicinity, and that makes me actually quite happy. In terms of power output, while still looking 
at one of the most powerful combo out there and it definitely felt over 9000 power wise uh, with most of my headphones leaving simply a ton of headroom especially on the 4.4 jack and high gain so starting with high impedance dynamic headphones and finishing with low sensitivity planar magnetics it simply dropped them all uh, starting with Odyssey LCD4, LCD5, RZH Phobos, uh, Kenneton Rogue, Neon Sennheiser HD 800 s it didn't have the problem driving them all, leaving simply a ton of headroom. So rarely I was reaching uh, its 12 o'clock position, it's half power, uh, it got dynamics, it got a pretty good low end delivery, so a clear sign that it was driving them all, no problem. However, when Hypermansus Vara hopped on my head, I felt that dynamics were pressing the brakes, I felt that the low end, the bass, wasn't as deep reaching, I felt that the sound stage was slowly shrinking in terms of uh, you know, size, so a clear sign that high performance Suzvara weren't really reaching their maximum potential. It still sounded okay, it sounded better to say a benchmark HP4, which is uh, more expensive to this one, but still it wasn't really unlocking maximum potential from the High Fumance Suzvara. If you don't intend on buying the High Fumance Suzvara, the HE6, Abyss, AB1266, then Erzo will have no problem driving your entire headphone collection. And if you have already a great sounding dock, maybe it's a better idea going with their OR. Uh, which still sounds a little better and has more power on top. In terms of transit response, in its stock form without the Hipsos power supply, it was providing quick shifts in terms of dynamics, an instant start and stop of the drivers of all my headphones, at the cost of a lighter weight bass delivery. For example, if I was getting an ultimate performance with the OR on the Odyssey LCD4, uh, Kenneton Rogner, which are very impressive in the bass. I was getting maybe a 90 out of 100 with the Ferrum Erzo. With the Hypsos in place, I was getting a 95 out of 100, so War was still a little more impactful, a little meaner sounding, especially in the sub bass and in terms of sound stage. So the family resemblance is actually very strong in the Erzo. It sounds uh, still impactful, still engaging, fun. Uh, warm, creamy, but uh, it was a little gentler compared to the OR, which was always very impactful and just bold sounding, especially in the bass. Disregarding the high performance Vara and all other low sensitivity headphones, this is still a very speedy sounding unit, highly energetic sounding, and if you want all and everything, including hard punches in the bass with electronic tunes, then I fear you'll need to get much price or separate devices. Moving on to sound stage, yes, the Sabre converters aren't really known to be pushing the boundaries in terms of sound stage, in terms of depth, or just uh, pushing the sounds outside your head via headphones. That is actually rarely happening with such devices. But with clever engineering skills, I believe uh, everything can be bypassed, uh, those limitations can be rewritten. So we're talking about a fully balanced DAC, fully balanced headphone amplifier with a lot of discrete components. And all that uh, tells me that it will not be limiting the sound stage in any way. So just prepare your zooming skills, your imaginary skills, because you'll be surrounded by music while listening to Erzo. It's very impressive when it comes to layering, scale, depth. Uh, it sounded as if I changed my uh, camera lens with much wider ones. So I've tried quite a lot of uh, perfect measuring, instrument grade, headphone amplifiers uh, in my life, uh, but all of them sounded quite bidimensional, uh, with little to no depth, with little to no height, but uh, luckily Erzo is not like that, it's much bigger sounding in this regard. So yes, it was not limiting the sound stage of the any of my headphones, with the exception of the high performance as well, of course. The perception of a breathable sound was actually more apparent in my stereo setup and a little bit less in my headphone setup due to the nature of headphone listening itself, but still it was pushing all those notes outside my head. So yes, uh, this is not your usual ESS Sabre dock, it sounds bigger, more holographic, and although great sounding units like a Topping D90 SE, uh, Gustav X18, SMSL Dio 200 weren't that impressive, so this one was actually more layered, bigger, deeper, you name it. 
When it comes to detail retrieval and transparency, in the initial design phase of the Erzo, there was one goal that stood out from the rest, making it as transparent and as detailed as possible, but without making it bright, uh, harsh, without adding a listening fatigue. And of course, after swapping that XMOS receiver with a bar brown one, they made it slightly smoother, slightly easier going, and after adding a ton of discrete components, they made it even more natural, even more organic sounding, even sweeter sounding than before. So yeah, it doesn't remind about the biggest majority of ESS Saber converters. It's very different in here. It's very detailed, but never, never harsh. And when it comes to uh, you know, chip-based converters, I believe that you cannot outperform a really well-made ESS Saber implementation. And I believe that Erzo is a living proof to that. After living for a few years with instrument-grade DACs and headphone amplifiers that are going with an ultra-revealing, you know, ultra-sharp type of sound, I don't believe that Erzo is chasing the same type of sound because this one is actually truer, more natural sounding. In a direct comparison, something like Fire K9 Pro would appear as slightly more detailed and transparent at first, but ultimately drier and sharper sounding later on. Moving on to frequency response, I've got textured and a full-bodied bass, so it wasn't exactly as impactful as Alive as it was on the OR put on a high-performance DAC, but it was going into a very similar sound signature. I actually listened to a lot of electronic and rock on this one because I couldn't get enough of that warm, full-body type of bass and saturated mid-range. And with something like Odyssey LCD4, Kenneth and Rogner, it was injecting a healthy dose of dopamine because this is one funky sounding unit. So if you like your bass clean and distorted, but also quite punchy, then I believe uh, Erzo will be right up your alley. Yes, the Sabre Dax and Midrange should never be mixed into the same sentence, but I believe that Ferrum's young team proved that miracles can still happen. So there is nothing of that thin, lifeless, boring mid-range, quite the opposite really, because this is rich sounding, this is full-bodied, this is uh, very saturated in the mid-range, a little elevated compared to the rest of the spectrum, but I actually liked this kind of sound. So there is nothing of that, you know, the usual sound of the entry-level or mid-level ESS Saber converters. It doesn't remind me at all like those. So it's very different sounding compared to say a Fire K9 Pro, but uh, I personally enjoy a warmer, richer mid-range delivery and I've got all that from the Erzo. As for treble, there is plenty of that definition, shimmer, detail, texture, but none of that fake ringing. So there is no brightness, no harshness, no listening fatigue. You can listen even to bright tilted headphones all day long like Hyperman Sundara, Aria Stealth, and that wouldn't be a problem whatsoever. I believe that firm guys nicely balanced this one, so there are no drops, there are no rises, just a natural and organic sound signature. In the end, Erzo fully preserved the soul of the music, the warmth is definitely there, an open and wide sound stage as well. I believe that they perfectly balanced that uh, frequency response, and the only thing that was missing the action was listening fatigue. So it's easy to like, it's feature-packed, all right, it has a great selection of inputs and outputs, uh, great industrial design and high-quality craftsmanship. I actually like everything about this one, with the exception that it cannot drive fully a pair of Hypermonster Zwara, and that's why it got a well-deserved silver award. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed my review, my full in-depth review can be found below, please check that out. And as usual, listen to my tunes, be positive, and I'll see you soon. Cheers!